what's going on everybody my name is kina and this is she's altered thank you so much for coming back to my channel thank you for watching my videos checking out any past videos if you are new here welcome 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 my channel is all about faith mental health and kingdom lifestyle so welcome to the family if you're planning on joining the family by subscribing let me know down in the comments below so that way i can say hello let me know your name how you found me where you live all of that and always don't be stingy share this video share any other video that you've watched share it with a friend get the message out there help me out my digital love language is when you guys interact with my content and you share it with your friends. So if you just want to show me love, it is free 99 to share this video with a friend. So today I'm just going to be real transparent with you guys and I'm just going to talk about what it's like, you know, dealing with an aspect of imposter syndrome as a Christian. So if you want to keep watching, stay tuned. <sighs> okay, every so often I do these, you know, video diaries because I really value transparency and openness and honesty. And I feel like this is one of those things where we've all kind of felt it. We all, you know, kind of secretly go through it, but there just hasn't been like a central conversation kind of around it talking about you know what it's like kind of dealing with imposter syndrome as a christian especially if you're in the academic space or whatever spaces that you may be where you just kind of feel like i don't feel like i fit in here i feel like i am going to get discovered as a fraud like i feel like i don't really know what i think that i know that i'm doing and i'm kind of just faking it till i make it and i don't want anybody to expose me for what's going on um so i just wanted to start off with sharing like you know what is imposter syndrome and I'm gonna leave a link down um, in the description section of this article from APA which kind of goes into a little bit more detail about what imposter syndrome is imposter syndrome was first described by psychologist Suzanne Imes uh, Dr. Suzanne Imes and Dr. Pauline Rose Clance in the 1970s. Imposter syndrome is a phenomenon that occurs amongst high achievers who are unable to internalize and accept their success. They often attribute their accomplishments to luck rather than ability and fear that others will eventually unmask them as a fraud. So basically it's like intellectual self-doubt. It's like even when I, I do things right it's like it doesn't feel like I did anything like even when you guys you know you know leave in the comments about how much you know a video that I made has touched you and you know just people have DM me different things about you know how it's just touched them and it's like and you know as my channel grows you know surpass you know my a thousand subscribers like mark it's like uh, the good things that happen it's just one of those things where it's like I don't I don't know how to accept accept it in a sense like accept the successes and internalize it like wow I actually do that good and it's like if somebody were to ask you know like what do you what do you do well what are you good at I wouldn't know how to answer that question but someone else looking on the inside is like oh you do really good with your videos with editing and stuff like that and it's just kind of hard like internalizing that and then like it feels like sometimes like when I do something well like it's not like because like oh yeah like I know I did that well because I know I have the skill to do that it's just one of those things like oh wow like people actually like that video like people actually like the stuff that I talk about um, and that just kind of goes over into like a lot of different areas of my life and then um, one of the causes that it was talking about of how you know people who you know kind of deal with imposter syndrome and like when I say deal with imposter syndrome I am not taking ownership of it like I rebuke that in the name of Jesus like I do not have imposter syndrome but imposter syndrome is trying to bother me and and self-doubt is trying to latch on to me but I am not doubtful like I don't claim none of that like it's not it's not part of my identity none of that but it is what is trying to bother me and so one of the causes is being raised in a family that places big emphasis on achievement and so like this is not necessarily like a bad thing like you know your parents they should you know want to motivate their children to succeed and to do well in life and it's like one of those things was like you know they it it's not like they they meant any harm in encouraging you to achieve and so I know like there's you know one instance that I always remember like where it kind of like the start of like okay like 
it doesn't matter what I do it doesn't feel good enough like there was one instance of where I got an A on something um, no I think it was either an A or a minus no I think it was an A minus I got an A minus and so I showed um, I had showed my dad and like oh like look at my grades and it's like oh good job but like you know why is this a minus like why is it not a plus and like I know at the time like he just meant that as a joke um, but like as a kid I kind of took that and internalized it like dang like you can't just leave it at the good job for getting an a like why do you have to point out that this is an a minus and it should be an a plus like <laughs> like can we just celebrate what i did do and so like it's like something small like that where it's like i know that there was no harm behind it no harm behind the comment but hearing that the way that i internalize it, it's like okay like i gotta be a go-getter i gotta you know do this i gotta do that I gotta be a high achiever and like even though like I know that there are areas in my life where I have done really really well like I graduated at the top of my class in undergrad and you know I'm doing pretty well in grad school right now it's still like even when I graduated from TSU and graduating with honors and all that kind of all these accolades or whatever I graduated and I still feel like do I really know anything like did I just go through my whole undergrad like faking it? Like did I really learn something to go out into this world and actually use it and apply it? And those are the kind of things like the thoughts that I always deal with like no matter how much I read, no matter how much I learn, no matter how many classes I take, like it still never feels like I know enough to, you know, be an expert on a topic. And it's so, like even, you know, like even my preparation for my YouTube video sometimes it's like, you know, different things that I want to talk about. Like I'll procrastinate because I want to get stuff right. Cause I'll be like, okay, I want to talk about this topic and like, I need to get my scriptures together, my research together. And it's like, I can't make a video unless I have everything in order because I want to be able to explain it in such a way. And if I feel like I'm not able to explain it in, you know, a certain kind of way, then like, I just rather like not do it. And so it's just kind of always that, that emphasis on like achievement. And that is like, and, and, and it's, it's focusing on like the things that you do instead of who you are. And so with that, it's like your self-worth starts to become contingent on achieving. And I even noticed this in my own personal relationship with God. It's like, you know, the moments where it's like, okay, you know, if I'm not... If I'm not praying enough, you know, if I'm not fasting enough, if I'm not reading my word enough, you know, if I'm not spending, you know, X amount of, you know, X amount of time with God, like, I feel like, like, oh my gosh, like, I just feel like so, you know, so distant from God because like, there's things like, I'm not, I'm not doing the things that I know that I should be doing, you know, to deepen our relationship. And so like, in, and then sometimes like when feeling like that, it would make me like, cause I know that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do and so then that would make me like not want to go and do the things that I'm supposed to do and like in this season like I'm truly trying to learn how to just be how to just be a daughter of God like I don't there's there's not stuff that I have to do to to work into you know to work at our relationship like I I just have to be and like I realized about myself which I'm gonna make like a different video kind of going in and talking about this is like I am a Martha and I'm trying to be like a Mary and if you know you know anything about you know Martha and Mary it's like you know when Jesus came over to their house like Martha was the one you know setting up getting things together you know doing work 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 she was you know more she was spending time with Jesus more so by serving versus Mary was at his feet and she was just she was just sitting she was at his feet she was just in his presence and so that's kind of like I'm like Martha where it's like okay Lord you know I'll you know serve in this ministry I'll do that I'll do this like whatever it is that you need me to do you like I'll do it like you know I talk to God all throughout the day but having those intentional moments of just sitting and being and just resting in who he is and who it is that he's made me to be those are the areas where I constantly like have to remind myself but then also not to get stuck in like doing things out of religious duty and out of religious habit like I don't want to spend you know spend time with God and read my word just to be able to check off you know a check something on my checklist that like okay spend time with God today but it to truly you know just be just fellowshipping and just being and kind of taking the work out of it so I noticed how like my imposter syndrome and things like that kind of all all of that kind of comes together with like my schooling and and things like that 
And so another thing that it said, um, which I'm not surprised, it says that imposter syndrome is also found to be prevalent amongst minority groups, which is not surprising because, you know, being a black female, like, you know, what they always say is that we have to, you know, work twice as hard, you know, to be half as good. You know, we have to constantly prove ourselves, you know, in the workplace, we have to constantly prove ourselves that we know what it is that we're talking about, you know, that we're, we're qualified to be here, that we belong to be here. And it's just, you know, that, that culture pressure of, of the, you know society kind of in a sense looking down at us saying that you know we're not good enough at what we do and we have to overemphasize like even at the workplace like I can't even like I can't even be my true self because you know then it'll be you know if I'm just being regular and like you know I'm, I'm just happy on the inside but if my face just looks like then like somebody may interpret that as like oh maybe she got an attitude or something today like if I'm not this you know happy go lucky bubbly person like you know then that means that I don't know how to you know talk to my coworkers and it's like if I don't you know talk like that or act like that then it almost feels like okay like what's wrong with you like if like I get you know judged about you know hairstyles and things like that and so it's like all of these things that just all of these things that really don't matter that make you feel like you're not qualified to be where you are so I'm not surprised that the research and stuff has shown that imposter syndrome is much more prevalent amongst minority groups because it's like we know that we belong but because society makes us feel like we don't belong we start to internalize that and start to question like do we actually belong in this space and so it also said that imposter phenomenon and perfectionism go hand in hand so-called imposters think that every task they tackle has to be done perfectly and they rarely ask for help that perfectionism can lead to two typical responses and according to dr. Clance and uh, according to dr. Clance an imposter may procrastinate putting off an assignment out of fear that he or she won't be able to complete it to the necessary high standards or that he or she may over prepare spending too much time on a task than necessary this is so true and so relevant to my life because there's definitely been times where it's just like okay I have this assignment or even I have this video idea that I know that I need to do and it's such a big thing and like I want to plan it out but like if I know that like I don't I don't I'm a I value quality over quantity so if I know that something that I'm working on is just not going to be to the standard that I want then it's going to make me procrastinate because like I'm trying to avoid the stress that comes with figuring it out so that and then uh, where it said like you may spend too much time over preparing and more than is necessary that is is, is so true because there is you know a video project that I'm working on and eventually one day you guys are going to see it because I'm going to put it up on my channel but there's a video series that I'm working on and because like because I wanted to have such an amazing impact on my viewers and everyone who's going to come across and see it like I've been spending a lot of time like preparing for it preparing for it because of that fear of like okay when I put it out like did I include everything is it going to be good enough like is it going to have the impact that I wanted to have and like one day God just had to tell me like it's not in, it's not gonna be in my ability necessarily to articulate myself in a video to present you know the research and the things that I have to say about the topic when I talk about it but it's going to be his hand on it it's gonna be his anointing on it like like of course there I have a part to play in preparation and putting it together but then this you know this perfectionism and imposter syndrome and all that comes into play you know tying together where it's just like okay I'm not ready to put out that video because like there's more research I need to do there's more things that I need to include and this is stuff that I am working on like I'm not making like the reason why this is a video diary and not just like a regular you know video is because like I I'm working in this area this is the area where I'm still growing in like I still have my moments of like when I'm doubting myself and I'm you know sleeping on myself and so this is a process that I'm working through so I'm not an expert like I wish that I could you know come to you and be like hey guys you know I used to deal with imposter syndrome and so this is how I got over it like this is not one of them videos like I have not fully conquered it yet this is something that's still a process in the future when I do fully you know conquer it you know I will come back and say like okay this is how you know I got to a place where I am completely 100% confident in my abilities the things that I do well you know my skills and all of that but this is why it's my video diary I'm just being being open honest and transparent with you guys about you know stuff because I just don't I just don't want anybody you know to think that this Christian life that myself that anything is perfect like 
even though I am where I am today with God, like there are still things that I'm working on. There are still things that I don't do well. There are still things that I'm learning and that I'm growing in. And you know, on my channel, I just really want to be able to communicate that that realness and that authenticity. Like, like this, like this walk is not perfect. Like I'm still growing. I'm still learning. Like I make mistakes all the time. I mess up all the time, but I I learn from it and I get better and I make you know intentional intangible steps towards doing things differently the next time so some of the reasons why of how I discovered it myself is that um, of how it kind of adds to this imposter syndrome stuff is that I need to find I need to have an outlet and a safe space to be able to apply the stuff that I'm I'm learning now rather than waiting on later on until I'm fully into my counseling career to apply it and it's just like hello I have YouTube I have social media to be like that outlet but then here comes perfectionism and be like oh you can't speak on that subject because you you're still in school you still need to study more like you don't know enough about that subject like you don't know about it from all angles so you can't talk about it but no I have like as I learn stuff like what I learn I can teach to y'all so I need to do better about utilizing the platforms and stuff I have to be that outlet to release stuff so that way like as I as I'm teaching people then I'm becoming more confident in what I know because I'm letting it out instead of like letting all the stuff that I know just like store up in my mind and then because I haven't used it then I feel like I lose it in a sense so I need to do better with that um and also like if I can be honest there's probably like sometimes it could be due to perfectionism but then sometimes I probably really don't apply myself like as much as I know that I could and I know that that's you know it's like it's partly due to perfectionism but then also like I know that an anxiety like I had put a post up like um, from the time that I made this video um, that there's this Instagram page that I follow that's called the brain coach which is super good you should go and check it out but um, she had this post of about talking about high functioning anxiety and just different things that she talked about I may try to include like the picture of the little graphic like somewhere in this area but the little um, the graphic that she had talking about just the different signs of high functioning anxiety and I was just like wow like I really kind of relate and identify with this and so like it's like sometimes like if I know that I have a big task that is ahead of me and it's gonna take like a lot of mental energy to figure out like I will kind of avoid like I'm such I'm an avoider of tasks and avoider of difficult comment like I avoid stuff all the time and so I know that sometimes like Sometimes it's me and sometimes it's, you know, feeling anxious about something and I will just avoid a task. And so that kind of, and because I avoid stuff, then that like when I actually need to, to utilize something, I feel like I don't know what I'm talking about because I've avoided it for so long. Hopefully that makes sense. And then like also another thing that I realized kind of adds to like my feelings of imposter syndrome is that when you actually begin to own what you do well and you begin to own the um what you know and you begin to walk in the things that you know that you know and you put yourself out there kind of as an expert or a specialist in an area that comes with a lot of responsibility because now people start demanding more of you they want more information they want to see your face more and like you know honestly like another they start they start holding you to a higher standard they start requiring more of you and like honestly like that is kind of like nerve-wracking like i it's like i know like for example i know that i want my channel to grow i know you know i want you know draw more subscribers and all that kind of stuff but then on the back end i also know that with growth more growth comes more responsibility because more people are going to want you know different kinds of content they're going to you know want me to put out more videos more consistently and things like that and so kind of one of the reasons that just like adds to like it feels safer to doubt myself because if I doubt myself and if I don't walk fully into who God has made me to be then I can avoid the responsibility that comes with you know walking and all that God has had me to walk in and so that adds to it and then like I, I really don't like speaking on things that I am not informed about I don't like speaking upon things that I'm uneducated in um, and so if I feel like I don't know in my mind what I consider to be enough then I just 
I just avoid things and it just adds to that imposter syndrome and like this you know just relates to my whole grad school journey then I add in like okay like I'm in online grad school for counseling like when it actually comes time for me to do my practicum and my internships will I actually feel like I learned something and then I've also heard like the stere like stereotypes of like you know counselors and places like not wanting to work with students who you know do school online because they don't know and so it's like all of that is just like do I really know what I know like do I really have something to help people and then to tie in that like I'm not really a words of affirmation person so even when people you know congratulate me and say like oh wow that was so helpful like there's just something in me that is just like like thank you I appreciate that but it's just like the the self-doubt robs me of fully embracing that positive feedback if you know what I'm saying and it's not a good thing and it's like it's something that I'm you know working on to get over it because it's basically I'm based what I'm basically doing is I'm doubting the God on the inside of me I'm doubting the gifts that he's given me I'm doubting the wisdom and understanding that he's giving me I'm doubting you know the skills that he's giving me like I'm not fully putting my trust and faith in him and who he's created me to be and so like like and like the bible says that anything that you do like that doesn't proceed from faith is a sin so like me me doubting myself is is not okay me doubting my abilities and what god has called me to do and what you know it, it's not okay the the knowledge that i have like doubting that it's not okay and it's something that i have to get in order because it's just not okay and so some of the things that I'm tr that I'm doing to try to work on this process is that I'm trying to work on paying more attention to the things that I complete rather than the things that I don't. It's like celebrating the small successes. Like I have this calendar that I keep and like normally whenever we have a calendar, we always put the things that we need to do for the day. But I started keeping an accomplishments calendar. So when I accomplish something in a day, I'll write that on my calendar and be like, wow, like this is what I did. And I'll be able to look over in that month. Like I actually accomplished like a lot, even if it's like a small thing, but something that I set my mind to do I actually did it so I do that that is you know kind of helping um, like I said I like to focus on all my small wins and accomplishments and I really want to work on sharing as I learn so when I read a new book or something like that and I you know seen an interesting quote or as I'm taking my classes new homework like try to reshare that content that I'm learning so that way like the more that I use it the more you know that people ask questions about it and I have to go into research like it's gonna help me like okay I actually know what I'm talking about I actually have the capacity and the ability to help someone and to help you guys when you guys come you know and watch my channel because I only want to give y'all quality I only want to give y'all you know the things that that God has given me I want to pour out back to you another thing is that I I always try to remind myself that my worth is not based upon what I do and what I accomplished my worth is based upon who I am in Christ and who he's made me to be so constantly remind myself like it's not who it's not who it's not what you do but it's who you are and that God loves me for who I am even if I don't accomplish anything God still loves me the same like he doesn't love me more for accomplishing more he doesn't love me less for not accomplishing anything at all like his love is unconditional and so I have to you know tell that to myself and you know tell that to yourself like his love is unconditional whether you're succeeding whether you're failing and anything in between like God's love for us doesn't change on our circumstances like at all so some of the scriptures that I have you know put on post-it notes and stuff around my room that I'm really trying to do a better job of meditating on and just focusing on and really just letting it seek sink deep into my spirit so that way you know I can you know this this self-doubt that I have about myself sleeping on myself sleeping on my gifts you know just not not owning who I am and who God has called me to be and not walking in it with the confidence and boldness of a lion so first John 2 and 27 it says but the anointing that you have received from him abides in you and you have no need that anyone should teach you but as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie just as it has taught you abide in him so the part of that scripture that really just kind of touches me is the first part when it says, but the anointing that you have received from him abides in you. So the anointing that God has given me to walk in all of the things that he has called me to walk into, like it's all like it's already in me. Like, I don't have to work for it. I don't have to, you know, it's good to read books and it's good to acquire knowledge, but the knowledge is not 
what's going to do it for me. Like it's going to be the anointing that he's given me. And to know that looking at this reminder that the anointing that I received from him, it, it's already abiding in me. And the only thing that I have to do, I don't have to, you know, worrying about, you know, learning because like the Holy Spirit is the ultimate teacher. He's the master teacher. So he's the one who teaches me. He brings all things back to my remembrance. So even as, you know, I go to school, I read these books, you know, I watch these, you know, seminars, these podcasts, as I soak in all of this, you know, natural knowledge related to the things I'm supposed to do. Like, even though I may feel like, you know, imposter syndrome will try to lie to me and tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I'm a fraud. Someone's going to find out. But like, the Holy Spirit is my teacher. The Holy Spirit will bring all things back to my remembrance at the time in which I need him. So I have no need that anybody should teach me. But his anointing is what teaches me. His And his anointing is already on the inside of me. So really, I'm just, I'm just sleeping on myself. Like, I already am who I'm supposed to be. I am my conscious self. I just have to own it and accept it and walk into it. And so that scripture is just, you know, really helping me. That all I have to do is abide in him. Like, that's all that scripture says. Like, I just have to abide. I just have to be and not focus on what I can do but truly be just like Mary she just was in the presence of God just sitting just sitting at Jesus's feet instead of working like Martha I just have to worry about being and abiding I'm sorry if y'all hear the, the it's raining outside right now and it's raining pretty hard so you may hear that in the background if you do I'm so sorry Isaiah 50 verse 4 says the Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with the word him who is weary morning by morning he awakens me he awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught so that is like a reminder to myself when I feel like I'm doubting myself when I don't know what I know that I feel like like I don't really know nothing I'm not you know educated enough to speak on this topic I remind myself that the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned and that he has given me the ability to speak a word of comfort in a season into someone who's weariness and so that relates to me personally because I mean going into counseling I'm going to be speaking to a lot of people who are in a season of weariness who need a word of encouragement who need something and so like you know I'm going to keep that scripture in my heart to know like the Lord has given me the tongue of the learns like I've gone through the schooling I've gone through the training I've gone through the education so when when the moment comes when I'm sitting face to face with a client or something like that like the Lord is going to bring back everything to my remembrance. Like he's giving me the tongue of the learn. So I know that I know what I know. I know I'm going to be able to apply different counseling skills and techniques like in the moment. And he's going to give me the words to speak to somebody, to speak to their situation. And so I just have to own that. And um, yeah, I just have to own it and I just have to walk in it. And then Daniel is one of my favorite books in the Bible. If you don't know that, you know, what? one day I'm going to have a trivia, you know, type of thing um, for you guys. And I want y'all to tell me. So remember this, write this down, that my favorite book in the Bible is Daniel. But Daniel 1 and 17, it says, As for these four youths, God gave them learning and skill and all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding and all vision and dreams. And then verse 20, skip down. It says, In every mat matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters that were in his kingdom. And so I really take that and I own that like, I know that for me it's like of course it's the anointing but I also know that like my mind is one of my greatest assets um and so like I, I constantly have to remind myself that God has given me has given me the you know learning and skill in all literature and in all wisdom so just like how Daniel had you know knowledge in worldly and in natural things and in, you know in the culture and the environment you know he had natural education but then he also has spiritual insight and wisdom and revelation and I know that that is how God has made me to be so when you know I I have my counseling practice and you know how you know the things I talk about are you know faith mental health and kingdom lifestyle and I really want to be the person who bridges the gap between kingdom and mental health and you know how to go about that and I've been able to find like a few people you know to look up to as resources who do that but there's really not many people who are going in the same journey that you know that I'm going you know entering into the mental health field like this but I remind myself of scriptures like this that God has given me learning and skill in you know in all literature and in all wisdom and that you know because I, because I'm going to have both I'm going to be equipped with both like it's going to make me 10 times better than anybody out here and so like because like I know that that's who I am I know that that's who he has made me to be but in all honesty there is still a disconnect between who I know that God says that I am and who I believe and think that I am. So this is my video diary. This is my honesty. This is my transparency. 
I am not perfect. I am still working on some things. I doubt myself a lot. I am I'm such an overthinker. I can be very, very critical of myself. Um, and I had made, you know, a post um, one time talking about like, I am not my past mistakes. So like, if I make a mistake about something, it's just like, I don't recognize that. Like, yeah, I did make that mistake in the past, but I've also grown from it and I've also learned from it. And so like, I can, you know, actually walk in that wisdom that I have, you know, att um, attained. And I'm the type, I am a wisdom based person. Like it takes a lot for me to to step out on faith i am the you know there are safety in the multitude of counselors kind of person but i know that i can't be that way and we gotta walk out on faith sometimes so that's what it's like dealing with imposter syndrome like as a christian like we just gotta be like honest and open and it's like and it's it's easy to just want to throw scriptures at somebody who is doubting themselves and it's like don't don't tell me scripture i know what the scripture says like don't you think i read my bible too like don't you think i tell myself like okay god said you are more than a conqueror like you know d don't doubt yourself like you know you like all, all the little different things that you can say you know that you would say to someone who is doubting themselves who are doubting their abilities you know but that all sounds great and dandy but i'm still feeling this certain type of way so what do i do with it and so just what i'm doing with it is like one i'm acknowledging it i'm acknowledging that i have moments of self-doubt i have moments where i feel like i don't know what i know i have moments where i feel like i really don't have the ability and the capacity to help anyone like i still have those moments where it's just like okay wait god you want me to do what like why me like i feel like you should give this assignment to them over there because they look like they know what they like they look like they know what they're doing and so just kind of what i'm doing like i'm acknowledging that I'm, you know, I'm working towards, you know, combating, you know, those lies because they're obviously lies from the devil. Um, I'm working on combating that. And then, like, I'm not allowing those thoughts and those feelings to stop me. Like, I'm acknowledging that I feel that way. But I'm also not going to stop, let that stop me from doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to still keep on learning. I'm going to still keep on putting out content. I'm going to still, you know, find different ways of how I can own it if that makes sense so hopefully you know in my transparency in my little video diary that something that i said resonated and and touched you and you can identify with what i said you know and let you like let's start up the conversation like if you feel if you've been feeling the same way especially like you know in school when it comes to chasing purpose you just feel it like god like even though know, if you're called to preach whatever it is that you are called to do in the lane that you're called to do it in the capacity that you're called to do it like let's just be real about the process like let's not fake the funk out here like let's just be honest thank you so much for watching my video thank you so much for subscribing for sharing for giving it a thumbs up for turning on your notification bell for leaving comments down below i appreciate you guys so 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 much so happy to be here and as i continue to grow as i continue to own who it is that god has called me to be I'm just so glad that you guys are going to be, you know, a part of this journey with me all the way from when I started my YouTube channel into whatever my platform, you know, it's not even my platform. It's God's platform that he's given me to manage, um, whatever it turns into. But thank you so much for watching and see y'all next time. She's altered.